What's going on, everybody? Good morning from frigid Louisville, Kentucky. I moved to Atlanta where it's warm, so I'm getting soft, man. This is cold for me. But uh, this is crazy, Naylor. Years ago, Naylor called me and he said, hey, Paul, I got this crazy idea, which is a normal conversation we have. He has crazy ideas. He said, what if we got like a couch and some chairs and we did like, we like talked with other influencers, just like behind the scenes, casual, laid back, just talk shop. And we did it at GIE. It used to be called GIE. And I was thinking, that's a great idea, Naylor, but how in the world are we going to pull that off? And so three years later, here we are, we have it all. So that's awesome, Naylor. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate it. Thank you for everyone that's, that comes to, to participate. So. Yeah, and for everyone who made it possible, Evan in the back, thank you. He works all year, guys, for putting on this event. And Jamie, she might be out there from Kohler Engines for sponsoring this event, but they're going to be having brats today. Have you ever had a Wisconsin brat? They're delicious. They're going to be at the Kohler booth today. So free 99, as we say in Atlanta, uh, you can swing on by the Kohler booth and get yourself breakfast, lunch, dinner. They're going to have brats there all day. So uh, that's going to be awesome. So our did I cover all the... Yeah, you did. Take, t- take us home. Bring us home, man. Come all on. All right. My producers <laughs> usually ha- got my cards to, to do the, the preliminaries here. But our special guest today is State Trooper Mitchell Gordy from North Carolina. Uh, I appreciate you having me, man. Thank you for coming out. So the previous two guests uh, run full-time businesses, you know, million-dollar businesses, Trifecta and Mulder Outdoors. And Mitchell's a weekend warrior because... <laughs> all right, so so when I, when I got invited to do this, so all right, when I, when I got invited to do this, closer. It feels weird, man. I'm not used to talking to the microphone. There so, you go. All right, so when I got invited to do this, I was like, why why in the world, you know, would y'all want me up here? And then I saw the two other guests, you know, with with Alex and Andy, and I was like, I had that aha moment, you know, and I was like, aha, they got to keep this relatable, you know what I mean? Because not everybody is those guys, okay, and not everybody wants to be those guys, you know, so. Not everybody wants to have a multi-million dollar business, and that's perfectly okay. So I was listening like hardcore to what they were saying, and towards the end of Andy's thing, you know, talking about, you know, just doing what you want to do and don't try to be like everybody else or, you know, you don't have to be them. I'm not them, and if you have a $50,000 business or a $100,000 business, you are successful, so accept what you got. Be proud of what you got. So I guess that's why I'm here, so I'm your weekend warrior part-time guy, and I know y'all are out there. Yeah, but you're content and it's rewarding work. Your full-time job as a state trooper in North Carolina. So this side hustle, and we're going to get to you know, a big change you're making, but it serves you to have some supplemental income. And you know, why are you in the lawn care business when you have enough money already? So it, it, it's a, re- a release. Like I just, I've got that worker's mentality, and uh, I can't sit at home and just twiddle my twiddle my thumbs. So uh, I, I've got to always be doing something. I don't have kids, so uh, you know, respect you uh, parents out there. But I don't have kids, so I just I like to stay busy, and the only way to do that is to you know uh, have my own business. So that's that's why I've got Mitchell's Lawn Care. Awesome. Well, we are going to dive into some new news of Mitchell's Lawn Care and why you're making a huge transition. But before we do that, I brought some books to give away. Caleb, you have some over there? These are yours? Yeah, we're going to give them away. So what I want to do is I want to give away one from each state. So who came from Arkansas? Do we have anyone from Arkansas here? Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> We've got our lovely assistant. Oh, somebody, right, done somebody in the Ms. back. Brittany. That's far away, right? So yeah, I'm kind of giving corner. a joke on the LCR Media podcast. Oh. Naylor doesn't know where Idaho is. <laughs> Caleb doesn't know where Denmark is. Did so. not know. Did. What's, what's close? Oh, thank you, John. Let's cut that grass. Make that cash. I'll give away 101 best business practices here. Tennessee. Hopefully someone's here from Tennessee. Right there. Oh, he's got his cowboy hat. That's Sam. He got Rock. engaged Oh, last Sam, year. I am. Rocky Top, Tennessee. Uh, where, what else? Another state. North Carolina. Well, this spring. Oh, yeah. uh, here we go. Orange shirt. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kentucky? That's low hanging fruit. Who said Kentucky? My home state, Georgia. Oh, here we go. Phil. Oh, uh, Pennsylvania. There we go. Is that the last book? That's all I got. Hey, uh, John, Mr. Pajak, can you hand that? Oh, uh, we got one more. Washington State. Oh, Washington State. Wow. All right, Washington. That's you a can get one. And this is the last one, Texas. Orange shirt. Texas. Orange shirt, Texas. Are we out of books? Okay, we have one more. Uh, How about Maine? 
Anybody in Maine? O H. Iowa, right there, Ohio. Uh, Go Buckeyes! <laughs> Y'all are looking pretty good this year. So, all right, that's so. Where did everybody come from? And then we'll get to your story, Mitchell. This is just mind blowing to me. I'm normally yeah, it's crazy. podcasting alone. Did anybody come from outside of the United States of America? Yesterday, some guy from Australia came to the Toro booth. Yeah, I met him. Nice. Yeah. What about Florida? There you go. That's, well, what, what is that outside the United States now? I know there's some Canadian folks. There's some it's Canadian folks far. coming. Maryland? New York. New York, Mississippi? Wisconsin? Wisconsin? Jersey? Man, this, this is great. All right. Well, Mitchell, we'll get into your story. I just, I'm, I'm used to podcasting with just me and Mr. Producer, and so to have friends, you know, look at faces. You guys know what it's like. You podcast and you don't see anybody, yeah. and then people come up to you like, I listen to you. You're like, really? It's, it's wild. So on uh, Caleb's podcast, on Naylor's podcast, Mitchell has shared his story of how you got into the lawn care business. So that's out there. We don't want to rehearse that again. But share what's currently going on and why you're getting out of lawn mowing and what you're getting into. All right. So in the last couple of years, uh, I downsized my business from being full time. So I got to the point where, you know, we did a quarter million dollars in sales uh, in 2019. And then it got to be this big angry beast that I was like, it was just so stressful. And I, I just, I didn't want to deal with it anymore. I didn't have to deal with it anymore. So I downsized in 2019, not knowing that the world was about to end and uh, a labor crisis was coming. So thank God that I avoided that problem. So my heart goes out to you guys that are dealing with this labor issue. But all this year, I was thinking to myself that, you know, I'm still a slave to this weekly commitment of mowing. And I don't have to be. I've got a full-time job. My uh, side hustle business should should still be fun. I enjoy the social media content creating and stuff like that. So that's not going to change. But what I did is I removed the the mowing for hire. So I've done a pivot. I can't take credit for that, that word, but it's a, a great word to use. So I'm still going to be in the industry. I'm not going anywhere. I love you guys. So I'm still going to be in the social media scene, but I'm just not going to be mowing for hire. I'm still going to be doing all the other services that I used to do, but I'm adding in tractor work. So I recently purchased a Kubota tractor and uh, I really enjoy doing that. And it's, it's nice to be in a cab with AC and music instead of you know, burning up on a, on a mower in the middle of summer. But my name's changing from Mitchell's Lawn Care LLC to Mythgo Outdoor Services LLC. I just needed to pull the, the lawn care aspect out of it. So I've been passing out stickers here and there and effective December 1st, I'm gonna change over the names of my platform from Mitchell's Lawn Care to Mythgo. A lot of folks have asked, well, what is Mythgo? And it's an acronym just like Nabisco. So we've all bought like Nabisco crackers or cookies or whatever. I mean, Nabisco actually stands for National Biscuit Company. And a lot of people don't know that. But Mythco is the first two letters of my full name, Mitchell Thomas Gordy. So that's how I came up with Mythco. That's great. Now you're basically starting all over. So do you know how to operate a tractor? How are you getting customers? I mean, you're, you're back at square one. So walk us through what's going through your mind, getting new customers and how everything you've learned from building a lawn mowing business correlates into this tractor business. So one thing that I've been, uh, like I talked about briefly when I mentioned it on Instagram the other day is that, you know, if you're ever in a point like somebody, somebody out there right now or listening, you know, at home, maybe in a point where, you know, they're like, something's got to change, you know, and, and don't get into this rut that, you know, if it's working, but you're not happy, don't be afraid to take a risk, you know, put yourself out there and, and, and take those risks because it may work out. So that's what I've done. I'm taking a risk. I'm putting myself out there. You know, I did some, some like very minor advertising on Facebook and I actually started out my very first job with my tractor was not even a paying job. I reached out to my brother and I said, hey brother, you've got a gravel driveway. How about you let me bring my tractor over there and resurface the whole thing uh, for free. So it allowed me to take some pictures, take some video, and of course, you know, I, I, I did a good job. He was happy with it, but it was a win-win because now I've got content to put out there to, to boost a Facebook post or something like that. So we all have friends and family that you could lean on. So if you want to pivot, do something new, lean on those folks, offer them a free service because, you know, you can use that to advertise with. But that's what I did. My brother was my guinea pig, but it paid off. And, and since then I've landed, I don't know, 10, 15 gravel driveway repair jobs. And I've already got two pending. So when I get back from the show, I've got two jobs to do. So uh, it's already a success, but I'm still having to balance the mowing right now. Don't be afraid to take a risk. John, do you have any questions you want to queue up? Not at this time, man. <laughs> All right. Well, I have a question. You, you touched on a very sensitive topic. 
How many of you have been in lawn mowing before and you want to go on a vacation or you want to do something, but you have your commitment to your customer? Can anyone relate to that struggle? So I want all three of you to answer, how do you handle your schedule? Because when you have a commitment to do weekly lawn mowing, it's very difficult schedule-wise. It, it's very difficult. So when I was running a full-time business, you know, I could relate to them. It's tough to get away, you know, and I still have my full-time gig, you know, with the highway patrol. You know, I can get time off with that, you know, just requesting time off. But, you know, I still had the, the beast of my business to run. Another thing, like getting rid of the, the weekly mowing commitment now has freed up my schedule to where, you know, if I want to go somewhere for a week, it's, it's very easy for me to plan that because I just schedule jobs accordingly. But, you know, what can y'all add on it? Well, for me, like early on, I learned quickly that you can't take on more than, than you can handle. Like you can do more in the summer than you can in the fall for all kinds of reasons that you probably all know. Or if you don't, you, you'll find out soon soon and quick. But So you want to make sure you just plan all that out and make sure that you know what your limits are physically, time-wise, whether you're solo or you have a crew or whatever, and try and factor in some of those controllable variables. Also to Andy and a lot of, and, and Alex's point, I have a four-day mowing schedule as well to fit so that any wacky things happen can be adjusted and all that. Uh, we still typically work five days a week because there's other things other than mowing that we do, whether we have to get caught up on something because of weather or whatever. And then when we go on trips as something like this, again, when I was solo, it was a little bit easier for me to squeeze the weeks, you know, like get stuff done early and then late and then come here for a few days. And then, but when you get to the point where you have crews and hopefully a crew leader, you can let them kind of run the ship for a few days while you're gone and, and kind of, yeah, let, yeah, let them spread their wings hopefully. And, um, and if you're in between all of that, and sometimes that's why some people just can't come because they just, they just have to figure things out that year and hopefully plan for the next year if, if it, what I just said doesn't work out. So it's different for everybody. Ever since starting my company, I've run two different companies. My first one, just right out of high school, ran for 10 years, crashed that company. I've done more wrong with companies than I've done right. And so but one of the things I felt like I always did well was rely on my team and my staff to allow me to do things in the company that I've always wanted to. And your own company is like, it's your own book. You get the right back to front. And so like, I know where we want to end up as a company. And then how we get there is like the book, all that prior to it. And so like, I was always really good about leaning on my staff to be, you know, cause like, oh, I want to be my own boss, you know, make my own schedule. And we all know that's like a bunch of crap pretty much, right? So, but, but I wanted to be, but I, I just truly wanted to make my company, like if something comes up and I want to break away from it to go to something like this or a last minute thing, I'm going to do it. And so I've always been, one thing I've always been good about with running a company is like relying on my staff to be trained and hire competent people to do uh, what we need them to do while I'm, while I'm gone and run as a, for the company to truly be able to run while I'm gone. And so that's, that's one thing. And I've done so many things wrong in business, like financially and you name it, we could go on forever at that. But I, just relying on your team, that's a big deal. I mean, that's really, the, that's the flexibility. Just making time, you know, you, you've got to communicate with your clients. It's one thing that I, that I talk about the most. If, if people reach out to me on, on Instagram, just ask me questions. Like a lot of people ask me, hey, like, how do you make time to do it all? And it's just communicating, scheduling, and just if you want to do something, just make yourself do it. Don't make excuses. I, I talked to, or I, I had a couple of guys send me messages like, oh, you know, I hate that we're going to miss the event. You know, we just got covered up this week. Well, that's because you covered yourself up this week. You Paul, know, can I so, interject so one plan thing? Ahead and, to that point, Mitchell, I apologize, cut you off. You, like, imagine a picture you have with your family or your kids or your dad or your mom or whatever, a picture you really treasure from way back, and then think, like, would I trade that picture for a day of me working instead back then? And so you got to roll that forward thinking, like, this opportunity comes up to go somewhere with my, my dad or my mom or my kids or whatever, would I trade a picture of me with my family at Disney World or whatever for a picture of me out shoveling? And that's, what I think, the way you really got to weigh it. Even a practical application how many of y'all having a good time at Equip? Yeah. How many people are here for the first year? Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. So I come to this trade show every single year. I'm already planning next year. So in the CRM, we, we both use Jobber. Yeah, Jobber. I'm already blocking it out for next year that these four days, I'm not booking anything in my schedule. And so it's even as, as practical as that. Payjack, did you have a uh, question? Yeah. Have, did you have any challenges going from small operating small equipment to the bigger equipment meaning meaning like you know going from, from like your lawn to, oh, to your tractors learning curve, yeah. you know well, there's a lot of people out here that are in yeah that yeah, position yeah i, I, I got you yeah, yeah. That jump. 
And so a few years back, I actually bought a little subcompact tractor, you know, to do some, some small bush hogging jobs and, and little grading jobs and stuff. But it was just self-taught. I didn't grow up on a farm. I didn't grow up on a tractor. You know, not all of us, you know, do that. Some of us are just self-taught. I screwed up some stuff. You know, I had to fix some problems. I know we've all screwed up things. I made some mistakes and I learned from those mistakes. The biggest thing is not rushing and taking my time. And, and we've got this plethora of information out there now with, with YouTube. So before I started this venture with the, the Kubota, I probably watched, like no lie, I probably watched like 30 videos on quoting gravel driveways because that's been the biggest thing I'm pushing into. It's like the entry level grading job, in my opinion, is, is grading a gravel driveway. But I probably watched 30 YouTube videos on how to quote, how to crown a driveway, how to dig a ditch, all that stuff. So it's like free material out there that some of you've probably put out there that these guys have put out there but i just watched that i studied it and luckily i've got a 350 400 foot long gravel driveway at my house so i was like if i'm gonna screw something up i'm gonna screw up my own dang driveway so i went out there and i'll be darned like i pitched the box blade one way and i go back i'm like i really just you know messed that thing up so i had to fix that so i learned on my own property first off so yeah, there was some challenges, you know, going from a mower to, you know, a bigger tractor, you know, just taking your time, being patient and making it happen. Seat, seat time is the only thing that's going to make you a better operator. So you just got to get in that thing and screw some stuff up. And that's just what it takes. Yeah. Pay Jack, do you have anything else? Yeah. Our next question is from Cedric. Uh, Cedric with Still Cuts Lawn and Landscaping, Pickerington, Ohio. Mitchell, when you decided to get into the blade grinding business, did you consider like the competition I was in the area for those services or did you just decide that you're going to be the best at it and you were going to offer that service to uh, people in the area? That's a great question because if you do follow me along, like I, I have a passion for sharpening mower blades. It's, it's the craziest thing, but there is a gap in the market where I live. I'm not going to talk about where y'all live, but um, between like a premier blade sharpening service and then just hitting it with an angle grinder. And it's amazing the argument you can get into people about like balancing a mower blade or like, oh, you don't need to do that. I ain't had a spindle break in 30 years. Well, whatever, that's great for you. I have found, time tested, that if you take the time and you clean the mower blade, you sharp it appropriately, repair it if it got, you know, nicks and dings and stuff in the cutting edge and balance it, you're gonna get a premium quality cut. And in a super competitive industry, which is, let's just talk about maintenance, not hardscaping and all that stuff, because every Tom, Dick, and Harry with a push mower can cut grass, let's face it, okay? So I always ask myself, what can I do to set myself apart from the chuck in the truck, even though I was the chuck in the truck? What can I do to set myself apart from him? And that was the quality of my mower blade. I would even look at my neighbor's yard because my neighbor had their yard cut by somebody that wasn't me. She didn't like my price, whatever. But I could take a, a, a piece of uh, grass from her yard after the guy just left and then compare it to the piece of grass in my yard after I just cut. So think about this. So when you cut a, a piece of grass, a blade of grass, um, if you know women that get like split ends with their hair, a dull mower blade will leave like a fractured little furry end on a, on a blade of grass. So you've got your, your blade of grass is going to look like this, you know, like all these fingers. What's that going to open that lawn up to? Disease. It's going to turn brown quicker, all that stuff. Now, if you've got a quality sharpened blade, balanced blade, it's literally going to look like you cut that mower or they cut that piece of grass with a pair of scissors, okay? So the lawn's gonna look healthier, longer, so between cuts it's gonna stay greener, it's gonna stay healthier. I called around, just like I think Andy said it or, or, or Alex said, called around to different service centers, service dealers in my area. What kind of service do you offer? What kind of machine do you use? What do you charge, okay? So I kind of found a couple similarities with price, a couple similarities with machines. And I'm like, do you clean the blade? Do you balance the blade? Do you do any of this stuff? Every single one of them said no. So when a, when a contractor or homeowner brings a mower blade to me, I clean it, I inspect it, I repair it, I sharpen it, I balance it, I box it up. Everything's like super professional. Do I go above and beyond? I do, but I charge for it. So it's just like, you know, what these guys were saying earlier, offer a premium service, you gotta charge for it and you're gonna get it. Is everybody gonna bring their mower blades to me? No, because there's the guy that think, hey, I can hit my mower blade with an angle grinder and be done and back to business. 
my rebuttal to that is when you get your car service, when you get your truck serviced, your wheels on those vehicles spin at like a high RPM going down the roadway. And if it's not balanced, what happens? You, you just start shaking. Your mower blade is doing the same thing under your mower deck. And over time, it does cause problems. Now, some of you guys may be going through mowers like every couple of years. Spindles may not matter to you. There's going to be guys and girls out there that have mower or mowers for thousands of hours. Okay. This little service of maintenance in your mower blade properly is going to save you from spending hundreds of dollars in the repair shop and your spindles. So I'm glad you touched on that because I'm, I'm, mower blade sharpening is very passionate to me. Yeah. And we like, couldn't tell. <laughs> I love it. Good magnetic. <laughs> like Andy was talking about premium pricing. I mean, if you're cutting grass, having sharp blades, if you're going to demand top dollar, you need yeah. sharp blades. Hey, Jack. Okay. Our next question is from Todd. Uh, this is actually, guys, for all the uh, influencers out there and uh, the guys that have been doing podcasts. Now, you guys have been doing this for so many years and you've accumulated so many episodes. Is there any talk in the future about possibly having, like, the best of podcast album? Like, I think I talked with Paul yesterday, you know, there's, there's certain episodes that really can kind of hit home, you know, for everybody, it's kind of different for me, you know, it, it was, you know, one or two episodes that really kind of flipped my business from going from shutting the doors to like, you know, all right, you know, Paul gave me this uh, idea, maybe or went through this uh, problem and it really kind of turned my business around uh, to go forward. So like, you know, what would be Caleb's top 10 podcasts, whether they're his own or from somebody else, same with, you know, Paul, your top 10. I know you've alluded to a few of them in the past, especially the ones that deal with this guy here. They're kind of good. But even, <laughs> even so with Naylor and stuff, your top 10 uh, for you and or that you've heard of and who you listen to. Is there something you guys have looked into possibly? I, I think that's a great idea. And I, I haven't thought about that, but that's a great idea. Paul, did you already have some thoughts with the conversation with him yeah, earlier? I, yes. I'm just curious. How many people in here listen to podcasts? Like, oh, this is great. Most like of a greatest hits. So I think instead of, you know, <laughs> listening to music or to something like that while we're working, when you're listening to someone who's further along in, in business or life, you just learn so much. So I'm always listening to podcasts and I turn it up to like 1.25 speed so you can listen to it faster so I can get through more podcasts in a day. But go ahead and answer. This is the last question because we're, we're going to have Jamie come up and talk about Brock's. Long story short, yeah, we would love to do like a compilation of our top stuff. It's just so subjective. It would come down to like what we think is best and not necessarily what the audience thinks. So if you ever, if you have feedback for us, let us know. Yeah, seriously, that's a great idea. So if we could all collaborate somehow and come up with some sort of way to do that, that would be more universal than just, I mean, there could be like our greatest hits maybe. And then, you know, like popular, like, like based on listens and downloads, I guess. So maybe we can do something like that, but that's a great, great topic. Thank you. Great point. Yeah, and I would encourage you guys, if you are here and you're not in the habit of listening to podcasts, hit the follow button on the Kid Contractor podcast when you're driving home. I know Andy Motor was saying yesterday he drove all the way down here from Chicago area and he listened to Caleb the whole time. Uh, just binge listen to Caleb's podcast. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, follow the LCR Media podcast. My boy, Brian Fullerton, I'm not sure if he's here, but the Fullerton Unfiltered podcast I host the Green Industry Podcast. Jeremiah Jennings giving me the stare. Follow the Growing Green Podcast as well. But what we're doing is we're sharing the lessons that we've learned through the School of Experience. And so you don't have to make the same mistakes that Caleb made and Naylor made and Mitchell made and I made. If you can hear us share our story, you can kind of, I say that my ceiling is your floor. Like you can start where we're at. Oh, you need a sharp blade? Maybe you're brand new. Well, I'll start sharpening my blades. You don't have to, you know, learn through the school of experience. So we need to invite, well, actually, Naylor. You, you could do it, too. Okay. You, can, you, you can wrap up your show. So that, Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, guys. I really appreciate everybody coming out. And I want to say thank you again to Evan and the team at Equip for giving us the main day, the main ballroom, and, and really uh, sewing into our community. This is great. So round of applause to Equip. <laughs> And uh, we're going to invite Jamie from Kohler Engines up here, and she's going to talk brats. And again, thank you to Kohler Engines. They're the one that made all this possible. Uh, they sponsored this last year. They, you know, sponsored it again this year. So without further ado, here's Jamie from Kohler.